It's September the 16th, 2015 on Dana Durnford, also known as nuclearproctologist.org, and you can find these videos and focusing on presentations at Beautiful Girl Boy Dana on YouTube. Now, we are on the Expedition for Life. Uh, we left six weeks ago, I guess, something like that. We went to the Alaska border of Canada, and we came down the west coast of Canada, for anybody who's not familiar. And I'm a couple of hundred miles, I guess, by the time I get home. I did try to go home yesterday. It was too rough, and I got pushed into Banfield. That's okay. And I will spend the next three or four days here. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm in a hotel room, the first hotel of the expedition. They got laundry, showers, uh, Wi-Fi, and just a quick explanation for anybody who don't understand. This unit with one P behind me. This is a little bit loud, uh, crappy audio because my microphone died on me. And that's just the way it is. And so this is unit two. That's 100% meltdown also, melt through, melt out. Unit three. 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. Unit 4, 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. And so the Spanish fuel pool on the roof of it, atomized and aerosoled, uh, a large section of the fuel rods. And that's, they had the reactor shut down, so the rods were in the fuel pool. These were active rods. These, this was real, maniacal stuff. All the fuel pools had plutonium in it. All the fuel pools had reclaimed plutonium and uranium in them. And they took missiles from the silos that are already unstable, had already gone through a chain reaction, put through a chain reaction again. And so right now I am on the west coast of British Columbia. Uh, it's been a very trying expedition, to say the least. And that was from a few days back. That's up by Tofino. Uh, there's a native community called Ahousit, with an A, about eight miles. Uh, north of Tofino, and uh, yes, two days ago they shot at me three times. Two of the bullets went right through the trees behind me, and I did after go outside and check for damage on the boat. I wasn't sure if they hit the boat. It was a bit windy and everything. They had approached me and asked me, did I have a permit uh, to be on their land? And I explained to them, no, I didn't. And that I was doing every 20 miles of coastline and that there was no notices anywhere on the charting system or here to tell me that I was on native land but I was sitting on the boat and anyway so I left there I intended to finish there but after being shot at um, it was prudent I got out of there and that's just the way it goes on this expedition it's everything has been wrong I've been breaking down through the coastline over and over and over and I really I've uh, been some trying times. Uh, I did spend all my money and I'm broke. I don't have enough to make it home. I do need to raise another six, seven, eight hundred dollars. I would like to raise a thousand and finish up the expedition. Um, we don't I got a couple of hundred miles to make it home. There's about 70, 80 miles of this coastline left to finish. And you know, it was the first time I had to ask for money. Money's been coming in, trickling in, and there was always enough to fuel up and grub up and enough for the next trip, but there's not anymore. Um, and so you can donate at PayPal. Use my email. Find me, Dana, D-A-N-A, Durnford, D-U-R-N-F-O-R-D, at hotmail.com. And that's PayPal. And you can go to the nuclearproctologist.org and you can use credit cards. It's a very safe uh, site. It's a big corporation that you, does the transactions cost is a couple of percent on PayPal and um, nuclear proctologist for me to get that money and but that's that's okay this is the fifth expedition it, it's almost all over we're ready to go home I'm ready to go home uh, I'll continue to I was out again this morning in Banfield and this is an extinction event about the coastline of British Columbia now normally if you plow in a healthy coastline what happens is the creatures come up and down deeper both sides and they fill in that gap and then the ocean itself like a glass of salt water from the ocean Pacific Ocean would normally have a billion creatures and all the eggs and larvae and small fries uh, but it would recede the coastline because the, the ocean is a super life 
So the coastline is not receding itself. It hasn't receded itself. It's not trying to recede itself. And that would mean that the rest of the Pacific Rim nations are suffering that same fate. You can't have the ocean not see one part of the coastline, but see another part of the coastline. It, the ocean doesn't work that way. It either sees the coastline, or the ocean is essentially dead. There is just a handful of birds on the coastline of species that are the over 300 plus species. And in Berkeley Sound, where I'm to right now, in Banfield area, in Georgia Strait would have, say, 5,600 species in the tidal pools. Here would be an extra 1,800. This morning there was 18 species. I counted 18. Let me say that again. Out of 7,600 species in the tidal pools, the nursery of the ocean, um, there's less than 18. This, this is a total extinction event. We can't stop Fukushima, and even if we did stop Fukushima, it's still going to be an extinction level event. We can't change that, and you can't stop Fukushima. And we need to try. So nothing is more important than stopping Fukushima. Nothing else really matters. Uh, we have to stop that re those three reactors. Chernobyl was one third size. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days, and it was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs, the animosity equivalent. You still can't sell the land in parts of the UK, Ireland, Scotland. And you still can't drink the milk or eat the meat in certain parts of UK, Ireland, and Scotland because of Chernobyl 28 years ago. And the reason they have a sarcophagus over Chernobyl, we'll call it a sarcophagus, is because the chain reaction stopped. And that's why they do not have a sarcophagus over Fukushima. And that's why you won't hear them talking about that. It's because the chain reaction didn't stop. And so nobody's going to mention the word sarcophagus over it in the community or to, because their job is to be apologist. Uh, it's this trip, I don't know what to make of this. It's been such a difficult, hell, hellish trip in every sense of the word. I just you would never think that doing the open coastline could be this difficult. And it's just because the engine keeps breaking down over and over and over. I keep running into the bad weather, I keep getting pinned down in the most uh, horrible, godforsaken spots, and it's so hard to find a mechanic, it's so hard to find service, it's, um, I won't be sorry when this is finally done, and it, and it should be done somewhere in the next week, week and a half, but it looks of it before I'll be able to get out of this section and move down the coastline. I'm probably just going to run home when I can get out of here. I have to get a hotel room at night. I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I need to come to a stop for at least a day anyway. I prefer to stay here for three or four days and finish off this area. It's just, I don't have that kind of money. And so I'm appealing for people to please help. Look, you've got to realize about Fukushima that this is not me, you know. I had 25,000 supporting documentations that I flushed out on my website before I even looked at Fukushima, the one on the ocean. So we proved it was, and like I showed you, those reactors are all 100% meltdowns. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. U.S. scientists find Fukushima cesium in turtles, whales, and fish, but there's 100 times more strontium than we do. And cesium doesn't travel by itself. You need 2,000 Geiger counters to test for what's coming out of the reactors of the known isotope. There's around 10,000 unknown classified isotopes and they're used for directed energy weapons. And the isotopes we hear about is the cesium-137, 134, and the iodine-131. So let me flash you some headlines just to get everybody back up to speed. Uh, nuclear material was reported off China on March the 21st, 2013. Uh, increase of cancers around nuclear sites. Well, the nuclear site is boiling off 120,000 liters from, this, from the fuel pools. They have to put the reactor cores in a pool of hard water, special water, for a decade to get it to cool down enough to be able to take it out of that building. Sometimes it's 20 or 25 and 30 years before they can get it out of the reactor, depending on the mix that they use. Fukushima was using mixed oxide. This is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. It's time to stop Lloyd, J. Colin, Ken Buesler, uh, the most despicable people on the planet. The most maniacal people on the planet are lying in the media, telling everybody it's like a banana, it's like a potato chip, it's like walking in the sunshine, it's like getting on an airplane. 
These got nothing to do with what's coming out of the reactor. You won't see bananas, potato chips, in G equals MC squared. Let me just run through a few more over headlines. In fact, let me jump over to the recent headlines. Uh, yesterday, no, yeah, yesterday's headline, Massacre along the West Coast continues. Alarming bleak situation as the disease reemerges. They haven't identified a pathogen for the sea stars or a virus. They, they took a picture of the Ebola when it showed up and everybody was able to go identify it. But for some reason, they can't get a picture of the virus or the mystery pathogen. They just call it that. And now they're starting to claim that it's a wasting the disease when they don't even have a, a picture of what it is. You can get a picture of anything else on the planet and then work out what it is. But for some reason, when it comes to the die off on the west coast of Canada, we can't get a picture. Go ahead, Zoe. Up. Come up here and say hi. Oh, I got Zoe. Zoe. Zoe says hi to everybody. She had a very long trip. Right, Zoe. Kisses for everybody. You want to get up there? Sticks out of your way. Your way. Massacre along the west coast continues. Bleak, alarming, in all these words. But they, the nuclear industry is a million corporations. The nuclear industry is a trillions of dollars a year industry. The security just for the nuclear industry is multi billion dollars a year for each province and each country in the United States and Canada. Uh, it's a disgusting fable and lie that nuclear is anything good. There's nothing good about nuclear. They've never been able to contain the waste. They polluted city after city after city, country after country, now oceans. They've wrecked the Pacific Ocean permanently. You cannot save the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is less than 100 species, symmetrically throughout the entire coastline. It's an extinction event. And everything, the birds, the whales, that are being reported on the oclets and the humpbacks, they feed on krill. But I mean, the sardines are gone, the anchovies are gone, the squid are gone, the krill are gone, the phytoplankton is missing. There was no migratory mass, migratory of birds and whales and porpoises and mammals and fish this year because uh, the crustaceans, the invertebrates, the, everything is missing. It's literally missing, and everything that's left is lethargic and destroyed. And there is no amount of anything left on the coastline. It's just, it's unimaginable that we, we have come to the conclusion that we can't trust any mainstream media, period. All they do is talk about bananas, potato chips, and walking in sunshine. It's the most evil and despicable thing imaginable. This is what they do constantly at an, at an increased pace. Countless dead birds, they're dependent upon the krill. Same as the whales that have been dying. They're all dependent upon the krill and the krill are missing. These, these starve to death. They say the fish are not there. All of them are starving. The animals are acting weird and sick. If you can find them. There's only a f uh, 13 species of birds. Not that any of them was in any amount. But there's 13 species that I counted. Like the Tickalass. I counted less than 20 of those birds. You know what I mean? Uh... Flood threatens Fukushima plant structure. Now, I don't know anything about that. I've been on the ocean non-stop, running down this coastline. Just, it's un unimaginable what kind of trip this has been for me. And I'm not, I don't regret doing the trip. It's just, it's been the toughest trip imaginable. Out of everything, this has been the toughest. And I guess it's okay, you know. Maybe I'll be able to be home, who knows. I'm pretty sure I was already here, but. This one has certainly done that for me. Once again, the Expedition for Life, the fifth one, the final one, is winding down. I still need support, and I have to ask. I, there's no other way to do this. It's us. It's not me. It never will be me. It's us that done this. On the vessel that you use, and willingly, and, you know, People say, Danny, you don't need any more data. Well, I can't tell you that there's nothing here if I don't go there. I can't tell you there's something there if I didn't go there. I have to go there. I have to cover the entire coastline to tell that story, that, doc that doc documentary that's coming. You know, I can't just say, if it's not here, it's probably not going to be there either. In Canada, we had to look at it all. We had to flush it all out. And But this time, I did talk to an amazing amount of people and fishermen and everything else. 
So in one sense, this was probably the most important trip. It seemed to be the only trip where I didn't argue with anybody about Fukushima, period, except for this morning. It was the first time I had an argument uh, with anybody outside of the, the uh, house of native, natives. Uh, he was a seal hunter. He had a seal on the bow of his boat. And as soon as he got around the corner, he fired three rounds. Two of them went uh, into the trees behind me. And so it's not like he didn't know I was there. We had words. We went around the corner like a coward. He shot to try to intimidate me, and he did. So I'm in Banfield against my will, but the weather blew me in there, and so I'm glad it did, because there's a research center here. And after looking at the tidal pools this morning, and by the way, Kate, I know you, when you watch this, uh, I didn't phone you. It's so hard to get a cell phone reception here. i got to climb a wicked big hill, and I have to use sticks to, to do anything. I just, I'm not in the mood to climb hills. I want to come to a stop to get a shower. And just make a little video and appeal to people to help me out and finish out this trip. It's the one part of the trip I hate it the most. And, and uh, I don't regret it, but I hate it with a passion asking. And, and, and asking. So hugs for everybody. Well, Fukushima, the people out there that are lying, manipulating, deceiving everybody, and claim, like Ken Buesler from Woods Hole Oceanographic and Jay Collins from Ubik. You know, when I come ashore in a few... Um, I was going to say weeks, but when I get ashore soon, uh, there will be no mercy for these people. I've had it with their lawyers, and everybody that I do talk to mentions that to me right away. They already said it was safe, already said there was very little deer, and I said, oh, and they would say Ken Buse, Larry and Jay Cullen. And so deer time is here, deer time is now. We have to put an end to their reign of, of lies. A deception of mass murder. These are mass murderers. Jay Cullen from UVIC is a mass murderer. Ken Buesler from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution is a mass murderer. They are the people that are getting all the traction and they're the ones that are causing all the grief and you can't have a conversation with the majority of people because they digested death. You know, good naturedly trying to put their fate into somebody and at some point in the near future these people are going to wake up and realize that they have been manipulated. I hope they hang those fuckers and hang them high. Thanks for everybody. Take care, folks.